As someone who's repeatedly been suspended or banned from all of the major social media platforms and never once for something I actually did, I do love to see that change may be a coming. I've said before that I'll believe it when I see it, but we're at least seeing the possibility of some positive change when any sort of improvement seemed impossible just a few months ago. Whether you like Bill Maher or not, he's been consistent in calling out politicians and journalists and tech CEOs for not knowing their role. And in his recent discussion of Elon Musk's takeover of Twitter, Maher defends the Babylon Bee and shows why Twitter needed some new leadership. So Maher begins with Twitter's pre-Elon view of free speech. Uh, the CEO of Twitter, well, maybe not any longer, <laughs> but he was. <laughs> he said, our role is not to be bound by the First Amendment. And pre-Elon Twitter is correct in that the First Amendment is about the U.S. government not interfering with free speech. The First Amendment isn't about what rules businesses can make. But there's a problem because social media platforms have become the modern town square. They're the places where people gather for discussions and share their ideas. What, what Musk is saying is, but it is de facto the town square. And some sheriff could, should come in and say, what good is the First Amendment if we're the place where people are really talking, they can't talk? So the problem that arises is that platforms that are not bound by the First Amendment have become the places where people have discussions and share their ideas. But because these platforms aren't bound by the First Amendment, the people who run the platforms have set themselves up as the judges, juries, and executioners of speech. How's that working out for users? The argument to me is like, has Twitter failed? in setting themselves up in the past as the judge of what can go out there. And I would say, yes, <clears throat> you have. You failed when you threw the New York Post off of Twitter for talking about Hunter Biden's emails. And it turned out that was a real story. Right. They failed. You failed when you said we couldn't read about whether COVID had come from a lab. They failed. Did you read about this Babylon Bee? Do you know what the Babylon Bee is? I didn't know this. No. It's like the Christian version of the onion. Because <laughs> everyone needs that. Well, some people do. I thought that They're was not Fox all news. you and me, okay? I like how Mars Guest tries to dismiss the Babylon Bee because everyone needs that. And Mars shuts him down with some people do. They're not all you. In other words, who are you to be saying what people want or need? You're not all people. Next, Marr, who's an outspoken atheist, takes a jab at Christianity, but even then he points out that he's not everybody. It says you're trusted source for Christian news and satire. I didn't know there's such a thing as Christian satire. I thought the religion itself was satire. That's me. I'm not everybody, okay? I'm not everybody. Have a little humility, right? Don't underestimate the importance of I'm not everybody, have a little humility. Because we live in an age where a lot of people demand absolute submission to any ridiculous idea they came up with five minutes ago. So listen to this. They got flagged for, they posted a funny video. This is funny to them. Okay. Sensitive content, Twitter said. In the video, they were making fun of Twitter for being too sensitive. They make fun of Twitter for being too sensitive, and Twitter flags it as sensitive content. <laughs> this is so through the looking glass. And here's what happens in the video. This woman who, going into the Twitter building, this is, you know, parody. This is what people do on television and have done forever. Okay, she's complaining to HR about how sensitive Twitter is. And the guy shows her an ink blot. And she keeps seeing Hitler in all the ink blots. Here's a clip from the video he's talking about. Let's, let's try something else. I'm going to hold up some shapes, and I want you to tell me exactly what you see. Nazis, Nazis, Nazis. That one kind of looks like a lip. Nazis, Nazis, 
Adolf Hitler, Nazis. Oh, I know that one. It's the Hindu symbol for peace. Namaste. Nazis, Nazis, Donald Trump. No, wait, it's still Nazis. Fascinating. Pretty accurate mockery, isn't it? Okay, then she runs screaming out of the building. He's everywhere. <laughs> so what should we conclude? This is sat this is right. well within what satire has always been. And the fact that they flagged this for being insensitive shows their complete lack of self-awareness about what their own problem is. If that's where the line is, you have failed, Twitter. You yeah. do need a new show. Yeah. Did you catch that last comment about Twitter needing a new sheriff? You have failed, Twitter. You yeah. do need a new show. That's the view of everyone who's cheering for Elon Musk right now. Keep in mind, we don't actually know what Elon Musk will do. We know what he says he's going to do, but Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey and Susan What's-Her-Face have all said a bunch of words about how they value freedom of expression and how their platforms won't be biased. None of them actually followed through on what they said they were going to do. So I probably won't view Elon Musk as the hero of free speech, until he actually does what he says he's going to do. But I'm still rooting for him, not because I know he's going to make the platform better. I don't know. I'm rooting for him because I can't stand the people who've been running the platforms and I'll cheer for anyone who replaces them. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, they've spent years turning their users into enemies, people who still use the platforms, but who really, really don't like the way they're treated by the platforms. I'm still locked out of my original Twitter account because I shared my YouTube video condemning an attack on two mosques. Twitter suspended me and sent me a message saying I have to delete my post because it contains video footage of the attack. I told them that the video doesn't contain a single second of footage of the attack. I never watched a single second of footage of the attack, let alone posted the footage. The entire video is me condemning anti-Muslim violence while discussing the mistakes Western leaders are making that lead to anti-Muslim violence. The video is still on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link to the video in the description box so you can see what Twitter locked me out of my account for sharing. But Twitter rejected my appeal, and then I figured out a way to appeal again, and they've just eternally ignored that appeal. And that's how they turn users into enemies. When Twitter says, we're suspending you for doing this, and it's something you know you didn't do, and you show them that you didn't do it, and they just don't care, you start to realize that Twitter employees are simply banning content that they don't like and falsely accusing users of doing things they've never done in order to justify banning content that they just don't like. And when they do things like that to millions of users while claiming to be fair and neutral and unbiased, they come across as a bunch of liars. Given the choice between, on the one hand, a bunch of extremely biased liars who obviously despise roughly half of the platform's users and who use their positions in the company to control speech that they have no business controlling. And on the other hand, some new guy who may or may not follow through on his promises will go with the new guy every single time. Because with him, at least there's some level of hope for a better, more balanced future on the internet. So, hats off to the new sheriff. By the way, if you'd like to know why the major tech platforms never follow through on their promises to protect freedom of expression, be sure to check out my video, How Big Tech Became Big Brother.